What? What? My wife what? bought me this shirt. What? <laughs> oh, he snuck that in there. Blaze speaks fire. Blake. No, Blaze. Oh, yeah, we've been saying Blaze. Oh, have y'all? Yeah. <laughs> we know it's Blaze. <laughs> but more hope they've been using. Once again, we meet. Glory to the Father. Yeah. So grateful. So blessed to be here. We have the one and only. Blake speaks by with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm excited for this one. I'm very excited for this one. How you doing today? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed, man. I just want to first and uh thank y'all for the opportunity to be here, man. It's a blessing to um be in the presence of men and God and, yeah. and man in excellence. I love this, man. I'm excited. Beautiful. Yeah. We talked a little bit before the show started and uh, you said something that really just fascinated me and captivated me and almost checked me in a way. Yeah. You know, you said the closer we get to Jesus, the more sinful we feel. Yeah. Can you expound on that a little more, please? Yeah, the closer we get to God, the, the closer we get to uh, to glory, to cleanness, the dirtier we feel. It's not because we have become more sinful. It's because the light has shown in the darker spots of our area. And the closer we get to greatness... We, we, we know that we feel more sinful, but it's not in condemnation. It's in conviction. So we, we know that we need a savior. And that, that light begins to hit the darker areas of our heart, the little things that we once never knew about. When we first come to Jesus, you know, when I first came to him, I threw off the drugs, I threw off the sex, I threw off the addictions, I threw off all these things. And I'm like, all right, I'm good, you know, but the closer I drove to Christ, I begin to feel these convictions of the littler things, the the you know the the cussing and the 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 lust and the the inter the things that Jesus talked about with the Pharisees. You know, you you're so pretty, you're like a whitewashed tomb. You're pretty on the outside, but on the inside, you're dirty. Mm. And uh, so that's what I begin to feel like. You know, mm. we 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 come to Jesus and we look at all these outside sins and these big things and he's like man that was just the outskirts then we're just the byproduct of the inward sin that you had and so that's what i mean by the closer we get to christ the dirtier we feel that is so deep struggling with that right for some what i noticed in my walk was i would get close to god and then it'll be for like a season yeah. mind you he's always there yeah he's always with us but I get close to him for a season, and then I feel this condemnation, like you said. But yeah. it'll be self-imposed. Right. Lack of not being in the word allowed me to believe that condemnation when it wasn't. It was exposure to how holy he is right. and how much, like you said, we actually need a redeemer. Yeah, we right. actually need a tone. It points us, yeah. It points us right back to the cross. Well, but mm -hmm. the enemy says, oh, the cross is judging you. Mm -hmm. the, the person that's there doesn't love everybody. Yeah. The person that's there, yeah, he's Lord and Savior, but not for you. Because right. as you get closer to him, now you're in trouble. Now yeah. you feel bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's from lack of word. Yeah. So, gentlemen, before we actually start the podcast, I've been listening to you guys. And you guys know more for me more like attentive and we're like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean but like the whole time you guys were talking we've just been picking up like gems and just like really meditating on each other's words and yeah. stuff and like you want to have a natural flow you know what i mean like irregardless of the cameras irregardless of the of the you know what i mean the mission we we'll have like just the general message from brother to brother mm -hmm. it really connects you know what i mean because like i'm here and just me like meditating before everything starts and just be like, yo, God, let flesh be slain. Mm -hmm. And only Amen. what you need for come out of us, allow it for come out. Mm -hmm. So the natural flow on the top into my state, you know, that because that's that's where I feel like the genuine grit and and the realness of what it is for follow God each and every day comes from and, and comes through a natural flow yeah there's mm -hmm. a natural flow yeah yeah because like, i have so many questions i've just been like all right adhd put pump up right <laughs> right <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? it's, yeah. it's, it's spectacular it's, yeah it's respect yeah. you're right though yeah he's absolutely right yeah hey fellas before we start um i i told him and i gave him already i have a gift for y'all Oh, and yeah. uh, it's just not you ready to give it like 15. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is the power. This Dang. is something from my heart. 
Um, What's that? Lord called me from offshore and, and to begin my ministry. He said he would bless me and take care of me if I was just obedient. And I began to um, open up a business. I make Christian wristbands, and this is an essential anointing oil that I blend myself with high quality oils and uh, I pray over and um, they're just uh, a small token and a gift from me from my heart of genuine to say thank y'all appreciate it right thank up. you Man. from the bottom of my heart I know it's nothing great but Man, it's, it is it's from me thank and, you, and, no one, no one appreciate and I have one for him too grateful. I already gave him his <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to to greet yeah. y'all and to okay, say, I can put it on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I'll put the sign on. It's high quality for okay. essential oils. It's um, oh, it's yeah. What what? Where 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 can they get this, man? Oh, uh, if y'all follow me on Facebook, um, Ooh. it's Blake Martin of Blake Speaks Fire. I I do everything personal. Y'all message me on there. Uh, on TikTok, it's Blake Speaks Fire. Uh, or on Facebook, oh. it's Blake Martin. Y'all follow me. Y'all message me. I take all orders personally. I blend it all personally. I'm, I create the wristbands personally. They're Christian wristbands. The oil, all of it is prayed over. It's high quality essential oil. It's uh, olive oil, frankincense, clove, and orange mixed beautifully. And um, I pray over it, and I pray that it, it will bless anybody. So get at me on Facebook or TikTok, and uh, ask you. these fellas if they smelled it, what, it, what, how they like it. it Frankincense like it. smells like myrrh. <laughs> it's, it smells clean. Yeah. Sanctified because it's prayed for. Yeah. But the alignment, I believe in so heavily. Do mm -hmm. you know why? Because mm -hmm. Hebrews is all we've been talking about. Me and my wife and her family mm -hmm. as one of my favorite books of the Bible. Yeah. Mine too. Literally, mm. my verse in this book that I love the most, Hebrews 13, 2. No, be I'm kind to strangers, <laughs> yeah. for some have entertained angels and didn't even know it. Uh, Hebrews 13, 2, and I got Hebrews. Mm. Thank you, man. This yeah. means a lot. You're very, very, well, means a lot. very welcome. And, and, oh, wait, I didn't do the smell test. Let's and in Hebrews, uh, my, my anointing oil is called, it's called peaceful fire. And uh, in Hebrews, nice. the verse says, our God is an all-consuming fire. Right. And uh, how I got the name Blake Speaks Fire is is uh, God brought me to Jeremiah five fourteen in the Bible, and He says I'm gonna make my words in your mouth a fire, and the people the wood it consumes. Tell mm. me what fire does to anything pure? It refines it. But right. anything that is not of God impure, what does it do? It burns, burns up, it up. anything that's not pure. So he said, as I put my words in your mouth and you begin to speak my word, it's going to burn up anything impure. But if it's pure, I'm going to refine it. Amen. And uh, so there's where I get Blake Speaks Fire from. It's uh, straight out of the word of God. And that's what I do, man. I just preach. It's not me. I'm just a vessel flowing from his word. Let me ask you, how'd you get here? Like, how did you go from a little bit of, tell us a little bit about your past. And how did you get to this point? Okay. Were you in the world? What is the world, you might ask? Yeah. He's about to tell you. Yeah. How was it before laying your head down at the Father's feet? Well, I, um, when I was uh, a baby, we lived here in New Orleans, and um, my dad was a drug addict. And uh, here, and I guess he was running away from his demons and thought when we was kids he'd move us across the lake over there in the Mississippi. But uh, I tell people this all the time. The demons that you don't choose to crucify in your kids' lives, they will identify. And mm. uh, when I was 10 months old, my dad was hitchhiking back to New Orleans and uh, got hit by an 18-wheeler on the side of the road hitchhiking to get drugs. But um, wow. the devil don't stop. He'll live on through mm. through your offspring, through your children, till mm -hmm. somebody till somebody crucifies that mm -hmm. thing. And I grew up with um, I grew up with an emptiness. I grew up uh, with with something that I was searching the world for for mm -hmm. identity and 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 i didn't find it and i didn't know why but i but i found it in dope i found it in the world i found it in gangs I, I found it in everything when god says he gives you your worth and god gives you your value you can operate from it but we don't know that because the devil steals our identity and we began to search out for our worth and our value and to fill that hole with everything other than him mm -hmm. and the whole time the living water was within us and so i began to look for that in other places and i like i said i end up finding it in a, in a needle i found it in in a gang i found it in everywhere but god and uh that led me into a life of crime um it led me into a th being a three-time convicted felon um, eight overdoses, yeah. um, laying dead in the back of ambulances and in bathtubs and, and backyards and, and hospitals telling me that I would never, um, uh, 
wake up again telling my parents I'd be a vegetable, telling my parents I might have brain damage. But God's saying no. You know, when I was a kid, I grew up in, in church. My, yeah, my mom just going to see where that, yeah. Yeah, my, my my mom remarried to a godly man who raised me and, and took care of me. And um he grew us up in church and I began to to know about God at an early age. And um I about six years old, I walked down the aisle and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I believed in in, in him and I believe from that day on the Lord knew the the path that i would walk down but he says i i chose him because i know the end result of his testimony the bible mm -hmm. says that all things work out for the his glory and your good of those who love, love jesus yeah. mm -hmm. right he didn't say just the good paths or the good yeah. decisions he didn't say all the bright and shiny days he said all things all the things. good the bad the trauma the dope yeah. the prison every path every time you tried to you were tried um, you know the overdose every time Satan tried to kill you I'm still gonna work out for your good because I'm gonna bring you out of that and mm -hmm. I'm gonna use that as my testimony for life everything that the enemy w wants for your bad God said I'll work it out for your good you know what I don't like I don't like when people tell their testimony in this way and then they start thinking like as this was me they, they'll start thinking like oh yeah you have to go to God because you failed so many times and it's funny how you find god in in jail and you find them after doing years of drugs and you find them after you done ruined everything else who wouldn't go to an imaginary friend yeah what do you say to them yeah um i say i didn't find god in jail i didn't find god in i didn't find god just be just because i um got to the lowest moment of my life i found god at, when i was a child i found god in the purest place possible and the whole time that i lived my life it was in misery you ever seen uh, a thug with compassion <laughs> that's a hard <laughs> life to live because yeah. i grew up that way um i knew about god i was in misery while everybody was out running having fun um and i was with them they had they were carefree i was miserable in my soul yeah like I, you don't belong there i didn't belong and you there. knew you was cutting up yes and but just had to be there for whatever reason yes and uh it's that flesh versus mm -hmm. spirit battle i would never prosper with the other drug dealers around me right i would never prosper in the crime that other people would get away with i would get popped i would get busted he was making an example every yeah. time god will never allow one of his children to prosper uh, outside of his will mm and uh so mm, that's a gem god will never allow you to prosper out of his will for the God. set aside when you set aside yeah that's right. listen it's it's either it's either it's two roads really you know um there's no way you're going to gain any success if you're chosen by god without him <laughs> or without the devil no way you know, because the thing is like i remember um you saw i'm an artist too and I had two moments before you now where like my, my on the verge of like breaking big and you know what I mean doing it big right. and um for the very last for, for the last times like or for the last time or the two moments um I was working on the album and the album the song sounded good I got the sanction from God for like go through the songs and like, everybody's like hyped up about it and I'm like yeah we we'll have money this is your mom. rich like yeah. you know what I mean yeah. and God literally just stopped me on my tracks he's like I'm giving you a choice to make right now a fork in the road mm -hmm. a fork in the road yeah he's like you can choose me mm -hmm. And you will still be successful mm -hmm. and he can choose the world mm -hmm. and you will still be successful yeah but i'll take my hands off you mm -hmm. yeah right and i'm like mm. so the one thing i've always prayed for from my child is wisdom like the first time i heard about solomon's prayer yeah as, as a boy I, i'm i'm like give me wisdom guy. Man, <laughs> wisdom, no. you know what i mean that's and, solomon love Solomon. listen immediately like call him up yo um we can do this somewhere yeah wow yeah um i had like 16 songs all of them bangers and them said bangers bangers <laughs> like yeah. like we can call notable like very notorious like yeah. producers you know what i mean yeah, yeah. it was like linking on like yo <clears throat> yo like, yeah 
you know what I mean, and just deals are just like A and R's and you know what I mean coming in from just demos that were sent out alone. And I'm like, yo. Can't do it. Done. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Uh, done. You know what? I feel you on that. Yeah. Like, I got sober, relapse, sober, relapse, gain it all, lose it all, gain it all, yeah. lose it all. And it was because I felt like God's mercy was just giving me favor because yeah. I didn't die in it. Yeah. But this last time, for the first time ever, and I never want to feel that again, I woke up in jail and I didn't have his presence. And yeah. I feared that Scared. more yeah. than the jail, the judge, yep. the money I'm about to owe for the, the, the stuff that I did. I was like, yo, this this is literally the worst hangover I've ever had Yeah, because he took his hand off of me because I just woke up in jail and I didn't know why I was in there because I was blacked out drunk. They say that's what, that's, they say that's that's what hell, hell is. That's the, the absence fire. of God. Mm. That is what the world the is. Mm. Of all, of it's all God. Yeah. His presence was gone for yeah. me. And I remember these guys were looking at me at the, at uh, like, because I was on the top bunk. Not, and then they put me on the top bunk. I didn't know. You heard me? I didn't know I was going. So I was on the top bunk. And they, they were yeah. looking up. They was like, yo, what you doing here? And I didn't know. And it just hit me. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I knew. I drink again. I'm literally That's outside it. of his presence. Yeah. And I have not drank. And I'm telling you, man, I've been up and down with the drinking. And yeah. it was the same thing, right? Like, you either going to choose the world. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna choose me. Yeah. yeah. You might get paid by the world. They yeah. might pay you well. You you might you might feel like you're feeling good. You might but get Jesus has a retirement too. plan, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah. You like understand? Joshua said, choose this day whom you will serve. You know, even the devil came to Jesus in the wilderness and he offered all the kingdoms of the world. Jesus didn't tell the devil, Well, you can't do that. No, he can. Mm -hmm. yeah, We're he can. in this world, not of this world. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh it's it's we have to, like you said, use wisdom and uh, not all prospering is from God. Is from God. Not Big all fucks. prosper is from God. And can you tell me can you tell me how you've how you've uh defined the world for people that don't even know what that means like when we say the world and that <clears throat> life versus the will of god yeah what would the world be to the young out there like you know 16 15 what is the world is it earth it's not earth no it's the systems right it's a system the world is anything outside of walking according to the spirit of god when when jesus came down and paid the price for our sins he conquered everything of the world that doesn't mean that he took us out of it. That means he, he, he set aside a people that, that there's a hiding place in him. And when we give our life to Jesus Christ, we surrendered and become a new creation. Mm. And that man of the world was buried. And, and no longer we live again uh, as, as that man. And we began to walk a life according to the spirit. We're in the world. We're not of, of the world. Okay. Give me three examples. Can you give me like, what is one act that a person could be doing okay that you see them doing repeatedly and you can say okay he's of the world not sins is it i don't tr is it a, if a person doesn't trust in god for a decision yeah. is it is it cursing is it um denying the existence is it self-will because yeah. i always picture like self-will yeah as an example yeah do you do you, how, how can a person be like you know what that is kind of the world yeah um I would say I would say that's a good one. Mm -hmm. It's a hard to explain to people. Somebody that doesn't have the spirit of God doesn't understand spiritual things, so it's hard to to put it in that perspective because everything of the world is 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 not bad per se to people outside of the will of god it's common it's normal things mm. um so like if a person okay they say okay they're saying the world they're saying the will of god i'm just going to work every day i'm just living my life yeah i'm making money i'm not going to church is that of the world no because sometimes church is of the world i'm only going to talk from like a personal challenge okay. that i had okay i knew i wasn't in the world I knew I was in the world, meaning I wasn't with surrender to God when things were out of alignment. So every time that, like you said, you would be around your friends or you yeah. would be yeah. in certain, you know, areas where there's, you know, 
women, drugs, gambling, things your parents didn't want you to do. Just for an example, you never felt like you were connected to it and you was always maybe condemned a little bit by your own thoughts like, man, I could be doing better than this or this is not a full fit. Yeah, I remember feeling like that because I got saved at 16 and every time since the Holy Spirit had entered my body when I was 16, yeah. when I like smoked weed, I got spiritually paranoid. Right. And yeah. I would be like, yeah. an angel was coming or I would hear God's voice like, you have messed up bad this time. <laughs> I am returning right now. And yeah. I would freak out and have like, I would never be able to enjoy being high again. Yeah. And then even like, what girlfriends, like every time I had a relationship that wasn't okay, God, I'm not going to sleep with her until we're married or God send me a good woman. It never worked out. Right. There was a lot of fun. There was a lot of, you know, just one-on-ones with her intimacy and stuff like that, but it always never worked out. So in other words, it's almost as if the world is what everyone else is doing. Okay, yeah. And they're okay with it right. versus what your what my heart would know is wrong mm -hmm. since I got, so like I put my hands up and said, all right, God, I, I believe yeah. in you yeah so it's not necessarily like acting uh yeah. okay making bad decisions like smoking drinking because yeah. all sinner all sins have been paid for it was more so the world is the world says it's okay to be a certain way yeah. and it's accepted but it's funny christians get hated for I, going I'm a, against i'm gonna get tell it? you where i think I'm, i would go with that and i had to think real hard i, I could have gave any some quick little answer but i but i wanted to walk i wanted to answer that according to the spirit and i think it all goes back to an identity when you're walking out of anything outside of who god created you to be that is of the world mm -hmm. if god has a plan and god has a purpose for you and you're walking away from the plan and the purpose if you would have chose that other route that's of the world it doesn't necessarily mean the things that you're doing of the world is the things that you're not doing god created you in your mother's womb with a purpose mm -hmm. and a plan and a value and a worth and every time that you operate from anything other than who God created you to be, you're operating in the world. Mm. And that's why he says, hot or cold, I'll spew you out of my mouth because you can't carry around the devil's tools into the, the pathway of God. So it's not about the, the sex and the drugs and all that things. Them are byproducts of you walking outside of who God created you to be. And so, so a minute ago when you said that, and, and I almost just flowed out with just these little things like oh when i smoke weed when i do this when i do that mm -hmm. my girl but god says that in it and, and that's why i was being so silent and I, I wanted to walk according to the spirit of god right now and answer that to somebody because you know there's people that don't have sex uh, out of not having sex or not smoking weed and not doing drugs and all those things and they're going right to hell because they don't know who they are and they've never been surrendered their life to jesus and they're mm -hmm. operating when you're not operating from god you're operating from the devil and our job here on earth is to walk in the purpose of him. Why? Because there's other people's lives and salvations at stake because of the life you're supposed to be living. So we stop looking at ourselves and we stop gratifying our flesh. And it's not necessarily, like I said, the things that we're doing. We're only doing those things because there's an emptiness there that's not of Christ. Mm. And that's anything outside of your purpose that God created you to be, I would say, is of the world. I said something to my brother that I've never said to anybody else before. I said it to my girl too. That moment was literally annoying me pulling a trigger. I remember that night we were having a sleepover. It was just like a group of friends. Don't move. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, you know what I mean? Right as we both pulled that trigger. That gun was pointed dead center. Dead center.